So the goal of this video is to define a smooth manifold. So we start with the following definition. Let U in Rn be open. We say that F from U into Rm is smooth if its partial derivatives of all orders exist and are continuous. And we might ask, well, why do we need the openness of u here? Why do we need u to be open? Um, and that's because if we recall the definition of the partial derivative of f in the ith direction, evaluated at a, so this is the limit as h tends to naught of f of a plus e h i minus f of a all over h. So why do we need u to be open? Well, um, we need, in order for this limit to exist, we need that a plus h e i is in u. And of course, um, for all a and for small enough h, that's precisely what the openness of u guarantees. So that's why we need u to be open. Um, so now another definition. So now let u and v in Rn uh, be subsets of Rn. And if f from u to v is a smooth bijection with smooth inverse, we say that f is a diffeomorphism. Okay, so, um, and of course, a diffeomorphism is a homeomorphism because um, a smooth function is certainly continuous, and if the inverse is also smooth, the inverse is continuous, therefore f is a homeomorphism. But note that, so diffeomorphism implies homeomorphism, but note that the, um, but note that the converse is false. Homeomorphism doesn't imply diffeomorphism. So an example of a homeomorphism that's not a diffeomorphism, uh, we could take f from r to r defined by f of x is x cubed. And then the inverse um, isn't differentiable at the origin. So certainly it's not smooth there because um, obviously the inverse here be x to the third. So... Um, yeah, okay, so next, uh, now let's consider um, an arbitrary topological n-manifold. Uh, let's call it m. And then um, we know that each point of m uh, is in the domain of a, a coordinate map. Um, and so if we consider the coordinate map, let's call it phi from u to u hat, which is a subset of Rn, um, then um, a plausible definition of a smooth function on M would be to say that f from the manifold M into the real numbers is smooth if and only if... Um, f composed with phi inverse from which goes from u hat into r is smooth in the sense of ordinary calculus. But note that such a definition would only make sense if this property is independent of the choice of coordinate chart. So let's now take two charts on the manifold M. So um, if, let's say, u phi and v psi are charts um, such that their intersection is non-empty, um, then the map um, psi composed with phi inverse, so where would this go from? Well, um, psi goes from... 
sorry, phi goes from u to phi of u. Um, and so if, if, if we start in phi of the intersection, then um, phi inverse would take us back to u intersect b, and then psi would take us into psi of u intersect v. Um, so this map is called the transition map. Um, from phi to psi. So um, this transition map is a composition of homeomorphisms and therefore is itself a homeomorphism. Uh, we say that two charts are smoothly compatible. So this is definition. Uh, really, this is definition as well. I'm defining transition map. So um, two charts... Um, are smoothly compatible if either their intersection, um, the intersection of U and V is empty, or uh, the transition map, uh, which is psi composed with phi inverse, is a diffeomorphism. So, um, and yeah, since phi of u intersect v and psi of u intersect v are open, the smoothness of this map is interpreted in the ordinary sense of having continuous partial derivatives of all orders. Um, let's just draw a quick picture to, to sort of see what's going on. So in our manifold M, um, we have two open sets, u and v. Um, here's the intersection. And then, so the map phi... Um, takes u to into um, phi of u, which is a subset of Rn, and then uh, this this part here is phi of u intersect v, and then what does psi do? So the map psi takes v into psi of v, which again is in Rn, and again, this, this part here, this is um, phi, uh, sorry, psi of u intersect v. And then, so what is the transition map? The transition map is this map. Um, this is psi composed with phi inverse. Um, so this is the map between these two regions I've shaded in Rn. Um, yeah, so next, next definition is um, an atlas for M is a collection of charts whose domains cover M. And we say an atlas is smooth if every pair of charts in the atlas are smoothly compatible. Uh, so an atlas, let's call it A, is smooth if for all A and B in the set A. Um, well, uh, in fact, I should say all pairs U, U sine, V phi. Let me just write in words. If every pair of charts in A are smoothly compatible. And then lastly, so why is it not enough to consider lone um, smooth atlases? Uh, what we actually want to consider is maximal smooth atlases. So um, an atlas, a smooth atlas is maximal. Um, smooth atlas A is maximal if um, if it's not properly contained in any larger smooth atlas. Um, so why consider maximal smooth atlases? Well, the problem is if we restrict our attention just to smooth atlases, um, then it'll be the case that, that some smooth atlases define the same smooth structure on the manifold M. And what I mean by that is we could write down different atlases for a certain manifold um, for which um, 
the the same functions f will be smooth so um so what we can what we do is we instead consider maximal smooth atlases so that each maximal smooth atlas defines a unique smooth structure m and therefore uniquely determines which functions on the manifold are smooth so um so final definition and this is kind of what we've been building towards um a smooth manifold a smooth manifold is a pair M A where M is a topological manifold and A is a maximal smooth atlas. And uh, we also say that um, instead of using the terminology maximal smooth atlas, this is also called a smooth structure on M. Okay, and uh, in the videos ahead, we'll see lots of examples of smooth manifolds.